Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girlfriend Lungu back with another reaction video. If, if you're new, welcome, and if you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. And yeah, so today I'm going to be reacting to Christianity has it all wrong. Wrong about God and Messiah. Rabbi Tovia singer. So without wasting time let's get into the video that's why i care about christians very much because they they're, they're so acclimated to this image of jesus who looks perfect who is somebody you will never be he's divine i'll call you live on the air please tell us your name and where you're calling from hi everybody toby my name is shamath and i'm calling from Melbourne, Australia. My question for you is that, is it anywhere written in Old Testament that the Messiah of the Jewish people is, a, in, is divine in nature? If not, can you please tell me what nature is of a Messiah? Like is he a human or, or a superhuman or anyone who can do all those things which God can do? Or he will be just a normal person like uh, all of us. Thank you. That is a great question. Oh, yes, this will be fully loaded. Rabbi, that's a good one. Take it away. That's a really excellent question. And I'm going to guess, please don't be offended, but I'm going to guess that you grew up in a Christian world with these kinds of ideas were made complete sense. And the reason is it's for the same reason that... Um, People who grow up around smokers or smoke themselves often don't, can't smell tobacco smoke. But people who don't smoke could sniff it out in a second. It is understandable why Christians would just think, surely the Messiah is going to be divine in some way and is going to be running around doing miracles. Why? Because when you read the Christian Bible, very specifically when you read the Gospels, because the Gospels is where you have the storytelling about Jesus' life and death and so on, the stories are all just miracles, and he can just heal paralytics and somehow forgive their sins, which is very striking because I thought you need a blood sacrifice in order for your sins to be forgiven, but somehow Jesus could see that somebody has faith and and says your sins are forgiven. And then the, the story usually goes in the direction of the Jews don't like this. And they're going, how is it that this man could forgive sins? I thought only God can forgive sins. And everyone, I guess, forgot about Paul, who insists that you need a sacrificial system. You need a blood sacrifice for an atonement. But the point is, the reason why Christians think this way is because they're fully acclimated to the tobacco stench found all over the Gospels, right from the get-go. Chronologically, Mark is the first of the four Gospels, and as soon as you get past the incipit, Jesus is just doing miracles all over the place. Just miracle after miracle, healing blind people and lepers, and that's what he's doing. And people are marveling, and the Jews are all angry. <laughs> that's basically the story. There is nothing remotely resembling this in the Hebrew Bible, nothing, or else we'd all be Christians. That means when you look in the Jewish scriptures about Mashiach, he's first of all called David. David was not a miracle worker. I know this seems striking to you, the viewer, but most of the prophets are not recorded, are not, there is no record of them that they're doing miracles. There are many who did, Elisha, Elijah, certainly Moses, Aaron, but Isaiah is not running around doing miracles. King David is not running around doing miracles. And the Messiah is called David in the Bible. Avdi David, see Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 24. David, see Hosea chapter 3, verse 5. David, all Christians agree that this is the Messiah. There is nothing about the Messiah going around doing miracles or healing people. That doesn't mean he won't do a miracle. It's just there's, it is very clear that in God's view, this is really not important. 
but the miracle working is all over the Gospels from beginning to end, and the Gospels promise that the followers of Jesus will be able to replicate the miracles that Jesus can do. Jesus just breathes on his followers on the first Easter, and they then have the powers that Jesus had. Or in Luke's version, they receive those powers at Pentecost in the opening of the book of Acts. So the miracle working is very, very important. But if you look at the Hebrew Bible, what do you encounter? That the Mashiach is going to give haichacha to the nations, which means rebuke to the nations. He will judge among the peoples, the Bible says. He's going to be a teacher. He's not going to judge people after the sight of his eyes, and he's not going to be divine. I encourage you. I encourage you, my dear friend from Australia. Open up the Hebrew Bible. Use that as your measuring read to distinguish chaff from wheat. Isaiah chapter 11. This is an uncontroversial chapter because all Christians agree that this is describing the Messiah the Messianic Age. It's one of the most ecstatic Messianic prophecies in all of Tanakh. Prey and predators lying together, children, could play where deadly snakes are. And the Messiah, we are told, is a descendant of Jesse. That's how the chapter begins. And we are told in verse 2 that he will be filled with the Spirit of Hashem. He's not going to judge people after the sight of his eyes. See, Isaiah 11, verse 2 and 3. It's not a miracle. And he is going to be filled with the fear of the Lord. Please see Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. And it doesn't make a difference which Bible you use. It doesn't make a difference in this case whether you use a King James Version or Judaic oppressed. It doesn't make a difference. He will be filled with the fear of the Lord. Now, Messiah is not God because God does not fear anything, and he surely doesn't fear himself. Isaiah 11, verse 3, he will be quickened in the fear of the Lord. If you fear God, that means you're not God. He's a servant of Hashem. He is not God. But what happens, and I understand this completely, and I only understood this in my adult life as a kid, I didn't get it. I didn't understand why people would ever worship the Messiah. What happens for Christians is, Mommy, tell me a story before I go to bed. And your mom comes in and sits down next to you. And what do you do? Pray to Jesus right there at the bed with Mommy. Jesus loves you. Mommy, where's Grandpa? Grandpa's in heaven because he believed in Jesus. What does every Christian think? Oh, man, I want to believe in Jesus. And, and you don't have to worry, Johnny. There's nothing to worry about. But it's dark in here, Mommy. Jesus loves you, and he's watching over you. Do you know what a profound effect that has on young Christian boys and girls? Do you know how difficult it is to see past that? My grandma was right about so many things. My grandmother was so right about what boys I should date and shouldn't date, and I didn't listen to her, and it didn't turn out well. How could she be wrong about this? That's why I care about Christians very much, because they, they're, they're so acclimated to this image of Jesus, who looks perfect, who is somebody you will never be. He's divine. In fact, I want to say this to you. You have no chance— of discovering the nature of Mashiach and God's plan for the Messianic age without the Hebrew Bible. The only way to walk in that sacred path to the God of Israel is to look at the Hebrew Scriptures, look at explicit texts, read it for yourself. Go to primary texts. If you go to Rabbi Google, you're in an enormous amount of trouble. Read a chapter like Isaiah chapter 11, which we just discussed. Read the epic passages that fill Isaiah chapter 2, in particular, the first five verses. These are epic messianic prophecies. Read the end of the entire book of Ezekiel. Just do it on your own. Like, just take Ezekiel. You could stop with, you want chapter 34, and go right through to 48. That's the word of God. Look, you know there are many religions in the world, and they're saying that they have in some way superseded Judaism. 
Judaism was once true, but now God has a new covenant, a new dispensation, a new salvific method of bringing people to eternity. You always go to the original. Go to primary texts. These passages are not difficult to understand. You will discover there is nothing in the Hebrew Bible that remotely resembles or supports the core fundamental Christologies found in the Gospels and found in the letters of Paul. There's nothing like it. There is nothing like John chapter 6, take this bread, this is my body, eat it, the wine, drink it, that's my blood. There's nothing like that. There is nothing like what we would find in all the Gospels, the Last Supper. There is nothing about the Messiah rising from the dead on the third day. I know Paul wants you to believe that. He lied to you. 1 Corinthians 15, he claimed that the Messiah is to was resurrected from the dead on the third day according to the Scripture. Read the first handful of passages in probably the most famous chapter in all of Paul's writings. And he says according to the Scripture, and there is no such Scripture. The Messiah is going to be someone like David. If you want to know about the Messiah, look at King David's life. He wasn't perfect, but he turned to God. Look at Hezekiah, a great man of God. Scripture tells us in 2 Kings chapter 18 that he was, in fact, the greatest Davidic king that ever lived and ever will live. Messiah included. No Davidic king will ever be greater than Hezekiah. Please look at 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 4 and 5. If you look at these passages, if you breathe clean air, just clean air, unpolluted air, uncontaminated air, just nice, pure mix of 20, 21, uh, 79, just that nice mix, right, of just air, nothing else. You'll be able to sniff these things out immediately. If, on the other hand, you're so acclimated to tobacco, you're so acclimated to smoke, you, you, you work in a casino in Australia, you work in a casino in Singapore and you could you smell the smoke constantly that at some point you don't even smell it anymore. So it's very important to say, Hashem, please wash me. Please cleanse me. Fill your mind with the Hebrew scriptures, with Tanakh. Zephaniah chapter three, one of the greatest men that ever lived who preached about what the world would look like, the nations of the world would look like at the end of days. They'll speak in a suffer brura, a pure speech, the nation of Israel. The remnant will dwell safely. See Zephaniah chapter 3, go right through 12, 13, 14. And you will come to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in a pure relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Thank you so much for your question. Adon Asher malach B'terem kol Yetzir nivra Let nasa Very interesting video. Um, I guess the message is very, very clear. But I would love to add that um, I love his advice on going back to the primary source of something. Always do your research. Always go go dig to get to the bottom of something so that you find out for yourself and make sense of some of these things that don't make sense in the world you're not limited by one thing you've got the internet although the internet is going to give you many many things but i'm not saying it won't give you some correct things you've got people that are learned out there that have more knowledge on such topics and they've got knowledge to share with you it's just you that has to be open to receiving that information there is books that you can read there's uh, many things there's many sources of information that you can use to actually get the information that you're looking for and sometimes if you look you find what you're looking for but if you don't you'll be stuck with whatever that you know for now and you never get to expand your knowledge let me know what you guys think if there's something you want me to react to drop the link down below or the name and i'll react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video